Hey guys, what's going on today? Bojo here, and welcome back to our third installment of our Flyers Talk podcast, the only podcast on YouTube where we talk about the Philadelphia Flyers and discuss news, trades, players, games, and all that other fun stuff that we want to talk about with this hockey team, and I need to think of a really cool intro so I could say it at the beginning of every podcast so that it gets repetitive and that you guys will hate it eventually. But for right now, we'll keep going off of the top of my head. Anyway, so uh, in today's episode, guys, we're going to be discussing the midway point of the preseason, which I guess technically it could be the middle of the preseason because I'm recording this on Sunday and the Flyers only have... Three more games left to go, uh, two against the Devils and one more against the Rangers. But mainly in today's game, we're uh, today's game, today's episode of Flyers Talk Podcast, we're just going to be discussing the three games that the Flyers had, two against the Islanders and the one against the Rangers. I'm not going to be talking about the one that was in New York. I'm going to be talking about the one that was in uh, Allentown because that other game was not broadcasted here in Philadelphia. So we're just going to be talking about that game off of the top. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing in today's episode, guys. Remember, if you guys do want to ask questions for the podcast or talk about the podcast at all in general, make sure you guys leave the hashtag Flyers Talk, capital F and capital T, in the comments section or use them on Twitter. I usually always uh, post when I'm going to be starting the podcast, so you guys can use hashtag Flyers Talk to ask a question before the podcast actually begins and you guys may have a chance to win a a team of the week item or some special item on uh, Hockey Ultimate Team in NHL 16 or whatever version of the game is out whenever I'm recording this and you guys will have a chance to win that if you ask a question for the podcast. So before we actually dive into, uh, you know, what we're going to talk about, this episode with the Philadelphia Flyers and the preseason and all that fun stuff. Uh, there was a request that was brought up in the last episode of our Flyers Talk podcast. And without a doubt, I really do think I am going to go forward with this request because it actually was a very, very good request that somebody posted. I don't know who it was off the top of my head, but somebody was suggesting if I could also post this podcast someplace else because I've had this trouble with uh, with this myself. I usually like to listen to podcasts or long commentaries of videos of, uh, you know, wherever they may be posted. So I actually thought this was a really cool idea to post this. So uh, because the, the, the problem with the podcast on YouTube is... You have to keep the, if you're listening, say you guys aren't listening to this on your computer, you're listening to on your iPad or on your iPhone or someplace else. You guys want to like walk around and still listen to the podcast because there's no video in the background. It's just a picture. It's just a thumbnail. You guys don't want to watch anything. This is just a listen to podcast. But somebody suggested that uh, because this podcast is only on YouTube, you have to keep the app open all the way and then... Sometimes their phones are on like a sleep mode or something like that, and then they have to load up their phone again. It's kind of annoying. So what I am going to be doing now, I mentioned it on Twitter the last uh, podcast after that was over. Um, I will be posting every single podcast now until whenever I am done doing these Flyers Talk podcasts. They will be now featured on SoundCloud as well. So if you guys want to listen to the podcast on SoundCloud, that will be posted there. There is a link in the description for my SoundCloud personal uh, profile page. You guys can go into the description, click on that. The only problem with that podcast on SoundCloud is going to be there isn't going to be any like audio edits to it. I'm just going to put the raw file of that um of that audio onto SoundCloud. So if you guys want to listen to the nice podcast where my sound, where my voice sounds a little bit better, listen to that on YouTube. But for those people that do want to listen to it on SoundCloud as well, you just want to walk around or just sit around and, uh, you know, you're going, you're like I said, you're walking on campus or something like that or walking around school or something along those lines. I don't know what you guys do in your free time. But if in case you do, guys just want to walk around and listen to the podcast or whatever, it will now be available on SoundCloud as well. So you guys can go into the description, click on my SoundCloud. You can follow me on there or whatever. And, uh, but the next, the version of that podcast will be posted as soon as the YouTube version goes live. So whenever the YouTube version goes live on YouTube, it will also be available on SoundCloud for you guys to listen to there as well so I thought that was a really cool suggestion that somebody had um 
I, I think I'm just going to post it on SoundCloud as well. I don't really feel the need to post it on like iTunes or anything like that. So I don't need to make money off of that one. The money I'm making off of YouTube, perfectly fine with me for that. So uh, very good suggestion. Like I said, I don't know who suggested that, but it's a really good suggestion. And I uh, hope you guys will hopefully utilize that as well in case you do want to listen to it on another platform. So enough about that spiel. Let's dive into this Philadelphia Flyers team in the preseason. So like I said, we're going to be talking about three games in particular, which is the New York Islanders at the Flyers, which was in the PPL Center, which is where the Phantoms play in Allentown. Then we also have the two home games of the Rangers uh, at the Flyers and then the New York Islanders again at the Philadelphia Flyers. So we'll first talk about that game in Allentown where the Islanders uh, played the Philadelphia Flyers. So it was a low sh- low shooting game, to be perfectly honest. Only 18 shots for the Flyers, 11 shots for the Islanders. So a lot of really low shots being played in this game. And uh, how did this, uh, the Flyers website doesn't even show the scoring summary. That's really awesome. But anyway, uh, I believe the first goal was scored by Michael Roffel. It was a really nice tip on a power play. I think Jacob Voracek shot the puck on that and Roffel deflected it in. Um, yeah, it was tied 1-1 to after the first period. Michael Roffel scored. James Wright followed soon after. And then we saw the draft pick, number 24, the 24th overall pick in the 2015 draft, Travis Konechny. Put on one hell of a show in this game and the next game. So, uh, Vinny, like, uh, I'm, I'm, it, like I said, these games, these preseason games don't really matter about the score. We just have to, you know, analyze who um, who really played well, who stood out for this Flyers team, and who actually performed really well. And uh, two people that actually surprised me a lot in this game were Travis Konechny and... Vin- and Vanilla Cavalier. Vanilla Cavalier actually looked fairly decent. You know, they've been saying that he's been doing some extra special workout routines in the offseason, and he says that he feels a lot better now. So hopefully that'll maybe initialize or initiate something in his playing style where maybe he'll play a little bit better. He's still going to be on the fourth or the third line in my case, and I know Ron Hexall is still trying to trade that contract, but you know maybe you should take some tips from me from our GM mode, our GM mode spoilers if you guys haven't seen that one yet. But maybe you should take some tips from me on that. But um, yeah, he played pretty well in this game. He did get a goal in the second period off of like a little scramble in that he kind of like just dragged the puck right in front of uh, who was in goal for this game for the uh, Islanders. Uh, who was in goal? Uh, who was in goal? It was Halak, right? I think Halak did start this game. I know it wasn't... Was it Poulin? I do not remember who started in net for this game. I'm pretty pretty sure Halak started it. I know Neuverth was in net for the Flyers. Yeah, I just don't remember who was in net for the Islanders. But still, it was a really good goal from Vinny LeCavier. Nice uh, offensive awareness, I guess you could say. He saw the puck right there and kind of just dragged it back. Kind of backskated and then shelved it, uh, shelved it high, which was really nice to see. Konechny... This guy is absolutely unreal. Like, you guys will see later when we talk about, when we show in the other, uh, when we talk about the other game when the uh, island, when we played the Rangers. But man, oh man, this guy is something else. Every time he hits the ice, he has speed, he has skill, he has really good hands, he has, um, he's, I don't know about his shot. His shot's not the greatest, but you know what? This guy is one hell of a playmaker on the wing, and. He showed it in this game. He did get a goal. It was kind of like a scrambly loose puck goal in there. He kind of just, the puck came to him and then uh, threw a backhander low on that and it went five hole. So he got a goal there, which was uh, awesome to see. But Travis Konechny has some really good energy bringing to this ice. Like I said, he has he has everything that you could want in a hockey player. He's Like I said, he's got good hands. He's got great speed. He brings energy. He actually laid down a... Was it in this game or was it the Rangers game? I think it was in the Rangers game where he actually threw a couple body checks in there as well. So, Konechny was playing his ass off in this preseason without a doubt. And I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what Konechny is going to bring to this team in the future. But other than that, nothing really too special about this game. Uh, this was, I believe, the only game... Uh, no, Provorov played in the Rangers game as well. We got our first look at Ivan Provorov in this game. He actually looked, he looked pretty decent. I'm not going to lie. He, the, the first time I saw him, he was not too bad. Uh, you know, he, he was, you know, made some pretty good passes. Uh, nothing too spectacular about him early on. Like I said, it's the only first time I've seen him play before, but 
you know, he had he had some pretty decent passes out there. He got a couple shots on net as well. So it was it was a decent uh, game for him. We also saw our first look at Evgeny Medvedev in this game as well. And we'll talk about him more when we get to the Rangers game. But this guy knows how to work a power play without a doubt. He makes some pretty good passes as well. Very smart. Ho- he has a very good hockey sense. I like that about him. A very smart hockey sense. Like He doesn't hold on to the puck at all way too long. If he sees a chance to put the puck on that and sees a chance for a deflection, he's going to throw it on that. I really like that about him. Like I said, he's one. Of the, he supposedly one of the KHL's best freaking defensemen, as they, uh, as they have told us. And that's what they've said about us. And, you know whatever hockey blogs and stuff like that and stats wise but yeah i could say i could see he had a really good hockey sense so the flyers did win this game five to three uh what else justin vive yeah rick vive's son actually had a really nice goal in this game which was pretty awesome he like dangled our entire team and sniped it It was pretty cool um uh belmar got an empty netter i know that and i think that's about it nothing really too too crazy in this game the rangers game and then the new york islanders game was a hell of a lot better this is when you actually started to see the second person who really performed really well for this uh, flyers team in uh this the rangers game and the new york islanders game so nothing really too spectacular about this game a low shooting game a lot of goals being scored i mean eight goals being scored between the both teams and uh you know what neuvert he looked okay in this game he, he definitely played a lot better in the rangers in the rangers game So, without doubt, let's move on to that Rangers game where the Flyers power play, even with not even all their starters in net. Uh, Claude Giroux actually had a really good game, too, against the Islanders. He got a couple goals. I think he got a goal or two in that game, but still. Um, This is when the Flyers took on the New York Rangers, and Mason started this game, and then I think Neuverth went in halfway through. I think after the first or the second period, Neuverth went into this game, but... Uh, another 5-3 to three win for the Philadelphia Flyers. A lot more shots taken in this game. 32 shots for the Rangers, 28 for the Flyers. And, um, yeah, the power play really, really shined in this game for uh, Philadelphia. It started off with a power play goal from Yevgeny Medvedev with a nice shot from the point. A nice slap shot that just... Uh, did that go off the post and then I'm pretty sure that came off the post and then like I said, he looks pretty good on the power play. I'm saying if we have Mark Strait and Delzato on the first pair and then Andy McDonald and Medvedev on the second pair, I am perfectly fine with that for a uh, power play defenseman, even though I think it's going to be straight and, uh, well, Delzato and Medvedev probably on the second pair cause they'd like to put Simmons, Voracek, Simmons, Voracek, Giroux and Raffle, I think on the first pair, but or Reed, or something along those lines. But the second power play, if Medvedev is on it, it's going to be really, really nice to see what he's going to work with it. He got the assist from Scott Lawton as well. Um, Lawton was another really interesting case. We'll talk about him in a little bit, because Ron Hextel had said that he liked the way Scott Lawton is playing, but to be perfectly honest, I barely saw glimpses of Lawton out there on the ice. I mean, he got the assist on the power play, but still... I rarely saw him out on the ice, and he was saying he was playing a lot better than Braden and Shen, which was interesting because, uh, was this the game that Shen had a good goal? No, Shen got a power play goal in this one, and then he had a really uh, good game the next one. But still, uh, Medvedev, like I said, good hockey sense. He's really interesting to see on the power play. This game, however, was the game of Shane Goss despair. So, uh, Medvedev scored on the power play. Braden and Shen also scored on the power play, assisted from Umberger and uh, Provorov. Umberger got two assists in this game. Holy crap. He actually got points, guys. He actually got points, and he got two assists, for God's sakes. Umberger says, oh, yeah, I'm skate." He, I think he said, oh, I'm skating a lot better. I think I got my speed back. <laughs> try, to, try to listen to that without, you know. Keeping a straight face, R.J. Umberger. I think I got my speed back. I think I have some of my hockey skills back. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. You keep thinking that, R.J. You keep thinking that. But uh, Shen actually had a really nice goal on this one, too. Like I said, assistant from Umberger and Provorov. Shen just kind of had the puck right in the slot and then just kind of backed up, uh, skated on his side, and then just fired it high on who was in net. That That was Helberg in net? I think Helberg and then Antti Ranta switched out later so that was a good goal from him the rangers fought back oscar limbaum had a nice little uh, shot matt Bodie had another backhand shot on that uh sam gagne got a nice goal as well he played decent his defense sucks i'm gonna tell you that i tell you guys this right now i do not want sam gagne on our penalty kill because he is not good 
<laughs> I think it was in that. Um, I think he was in the Islanders game, and then in the first one, and then in this, and then in the second Islanders game. Man, his defense is not good. Sam Gundy does not know how to play defense at all. It's pretty shitty. Offensive? Yeah, I, I, I'm fine with that. But defensively, no wonder he's always like a really big minus player because he just can't play defense for shit. So, but he did have a nice goal on this play. All pretty much it was started by Wayne Simmons, who just did a, like a power drive behind the back of the net, shielded the puck away, and threw it right across the crease. Sam Gagne just buried it in a wide open net, so that was good. But then, like I said, this was the game of Shane Gostas Bear. This game, and then the following game as well. He had a nice uh, slap shot on net from the point, just took it right there, assisted from who else but Travis Konechny, who also had another great game this game as well. There was a point where Konechny had the puck in the corner, well, not in the corner, off by the Rangers bench, off, uh, bench, off by the Rangers bench, uh, when there was like two or three Rangers surrounded him, he kicks the puck, he like shoots the puck right off the boards, a burst of speed, like deeks one Ranger out and then just drives to the net hard and still gets a shot on net, which was awesome. He threw a couple by checks in this game as well, and he got that nice assist from Gostas Bear, kind of just threw it back to the point. Took a slap shot on that. Those just, those are assisted by Konechny and Cousins, who I I'm, I was surprised by Nick Cousins. He's still on. He still did not get called down yet. Same thing with Lawton. Like I'm like I said, ah, uh, Cousins and Lawton have not surprised me at all in this preseason at all, at all to say the least. They have not done really anything too spectacular to say the least, but. Gagne got the goal, Gosses Bear, like I said, got that goal, and then he got another power play goal, another snapshot from Wayne Simmons and Sam Gagne. So, Gosses Bear did have two uh, goals in this game, one power play goal. Like I said, man, he's the offensive defenseman. He's definitely my favorite of the uh, defensive prospects that we have down in, the, uh, down in the pool. You need another offensive defenseman to take over this team because, like I said, Strike is going to be gone hopefully within the next season or two so you're going to have to have another offensive defenseman fill his role and Goss Despair is definitely going to be the person to do that um what else Bodie got a late goal Mason was pretty pissed off about it as well it was yeah it was a pretty shitty goal I'm not gonna lie it was a slap shot goal. He shouldn't have really let that one up, but whatever. Oh, Mason did play this whole game. That's all right. No, Mason got in the halfway point of it. Right. I forget. God damn it. I'm pretty sure Neuver yeah, Neuverth was in this game. No, 32 shots. Mason played the whole game. Yeah, he did. Okay. Forgive me. Uh, What else? What else? What else? I'm looking at the penalty summary, too. Uh, Emerson Needham took a lot of penalties in this game. Cousins took one. What was the uh, Gosses Bear had interference? That was a shitty call, I believe. Uh, Warcheck took a couple penalties in the next game, I think. In the first game, too, he took a lot of penalties. Okay. Other than that, nothing really. Nothing, like I said, spectacular about this game. But once again, we saw that the Philadelphia power play was still pretty awesome. Like I said, uh, Medvedev knows how to work it. Really good hockey sense. And, uh,. Gostas Bear had another nice game in there as well. And then before this game against the, the Islanders uh, game, Ron Huxtel was saying that he's he's been liking the play of Scott Lawton, which I have yet to see. And then he he's, has said that Braden Shen has been playing okay. And I think Braden Shen heard him in this game, and he actually played a really, really good game. So Flyers had a lot of, um, had a lot of their starters in this game. Uh, Gudas played pretty well in this game. Gudas, I think, has played in every game except for except for the Rangers game. I don't know if Gudas played in the Rangers game as as well. I don't think he did. I think he only played in this island in the two Islanders games, off at the top of my head that I can think of. But he played pretty well. He's got a really good slap shot, as I've seen. He's got a really good slap shot. And like I said, we have him more as like a you know, an enforcer defenseman back there, but still, he did get an assist in this game, which was nice to see, so, uh, Neuvert started this whole game, am I correct? Yeah, Michael Neuvert did play the whole game for this one, Gibson and, uh, Kevin Poulin played both games for the, uh, for this game for the Islanders, mostly, it was, uh, Christopher Gibson, who was that Toronto Ma Maple Leafs goaltender that they got in the trade for, uh, Michael Grabner, but... Let's get into the scoring of this game. So Bracken Kearns got the first uh, goal on a power play goal. 
Nothing really Neuwirth could have done about this game. That was just like a rebound shot in front. And then uh, Chris Porter got a nice little tipping goal from uh, who else but Yevgeny Medvedev. Like I said, great hockey sense. He just throws the puck on net, man. He, he throws the puck on net. Porter got a nice little tipping goal. And uh, Porter's been actually not bad. He's a nice little uh, player. Him and uh, Colin, Mac, uh, Colin McDonald were actually not too bad during this preseason. They're going to be nice little depth players on the fourth line in case uh, Belmar, Vandevelde, and uh, Ryan White can't go for a game. I think those two guys will actually be pretty nice additions to the fourth line if uh, one of those guys needs a little bit of a break every now and then or if an injury comes in. I think they'll be solid additions. But uh, once again, Medvedev knows how to work that point. Gostas Bear had a wicked slap shot goal in this game. My goodness. Uh, it, was, it was unassisted as well because Medvedev, it was on a power play. Medvedev got the puck. He took a slap shot. He didn't get all of it, and it got rebound. The Islanders tried to clear it, and then it was kind of like a bouncing puck, really, but then Gosses Bear just winded up into that sucker and slapped, slapped the living hell out of that puck and went in, and uh, that was a nice goal by him. Uh, Braided Shen's goal in the second period was freaking awesome. He had a nice little chip and a nice little deke, and then just did a power drive right to the net. He went all the way off to the right side, cut back into the middle, and then... Did like a typical like NHL 15, NHL 16 goal where he went into the corner uh, and then just drove right in front of the net and tucked it in on the far side. Uh, he got tripped up or like fell over at the end there though, but still he made a nice little goal. Um, Raffle had a pretty nice goal as well. He just got his own rebound and took the shot on that, getting that one. Uh, Sezikis had a nice slap shot goal in this game that went right by Neuwirth, and then Matt Reed got another goal on a power play assisted by Evgeny Medvedev, who, go figure, he had another, he had a nice pass uh, Medvedev did. I believe Gagne got it to him, that Medvedev had at the point, and he saw Matt Reed all the way back door, so he passed it all the way from the point, all the way to the back door of Matt Reed, and kind of just, uh, shot that right into the corner of the net for that goal. So the Flyers won this game 5-2. to two. Neuverth played a much better game in this one, I would say. Um, other than that, penalties. Let's see. Gouda's got high sticking. Raffle, legal check to the head. McDonald's, Vandevelde, Vorchek, Delzato. Yeah, nothing really too spectacular. Delzato was... Eh. Delzato was eh this preseason nothing really too spectacular he kind of played the way that he played at the end of last season he had a really good start and then kind of like didn't play as well at the end of the season he's kind of picked off picked like started exactly where he left off last year he was turning the puck over a lot nothing really too spectacular about that but you know what are you gonna do all right so uh there's the three games that we have analyzed now we can actually go in depth and look at all the players that have uh you know, who really stood out so far for this Flyers preseason team. As he said, Konechny was amazing. Gostas Bear, really good. Medvedev, you know, it looks like he could transition really well into uh, the NHL style of play going from the KHL. But like I said, we'll have to see that. And, um, oh, Cousins did get sent down. That's right. I see it right in front of my face. And, um, other than that, okay. So, uh, do, 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 what do I want to talk about? Prospects, yeah. All right, so Konechny got sent down. We already know about that. It was Konechny, Provorov, and Morin got sent back to their junior team. So Konechny went back to Ottawa. Provorov went back to Brandon. And uh, do, 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 was it Morin? I think it was Morin, right? Hold on, I need to look that up. Maybe I can actually just look at the most recent stories. A lot of featured stories. News. Where's news at? News. Uh, let's see. Oh, it was Sandheim. It was Sandheim. It wasn't Warren. Warren is still here on the squad. So, Konechny, Provorov, and Travis Sandheim got sent back down to their junior squad. So, um, I kind of see. I kind of saw that coming. The fly. I guess the Flyers just wanted to get their quick looks at looks at uh, Konechny, Provorov, and Sandheim. Hextall was saying that Sandheim and Morin played a lot better in camp last year than they did this year. So Sandheim goes back to Calgary, Provorov goes back to Brandon, Konechny goes back to Ottawa. Like I said, uh, those three guys, Konechny was insane, uh, insane this camp. He's going to be one hell of a player on this team in the future, one hell of a winger. Uh, like I said, if Giroux and Voracek are still around the time that Konechny's ready, I see him immediately taking that 
uh, left wing spot to work with Giroud and Voracek. I think he's going to be one hell of a player. Provorov, like I said, we saw some we saw some good things about Provorov. Nothing really I saw too bad about him. Uh, he did have the one turnover that led to an Islanders goal in the first game. But other than that, you know, he, he still played pretty solid. I think he has a lot of work to still left to do, but, you know, a lot of people were saying that he is he was NHL ready, but apparently not. Uh, Sandheim, you know, I didn't really see much of Sandheim either, so he's going to get sent back to his junior club. Like I said, they Hextall said he played a lot better last year than this year. So that's that. And they also, Flyers loan Nick Cousins, Shane Gostisbehere, and Robert Hag to the Phantoms. Hag actually played pretty well in this preseason as well. Hag is a really good penalty killer. Clears the puck down very well. He does a nice job blocking shots. So I think the fans are going to have fun with Robert Hag once again this year. Um, surprised to see Gostas Bear go. Because I think the Phantoms started their season already. So uh, they wanted to get Gostas Bear down there and playing immediately. Same thing with Nick Cousins. Nick Cousins didn't have the greatest couple of preseason games either. Like I said, I'm still I'm surprised Lawton didn't get sent back down yet. Because I, I guess the Flyers still want to see what he still has left to give. In the last three season games. I think they're going to play him pretty hard. Because they want to see if he's ready or not. But I am surprised to see Gostas Bear here. So out of all the defensive prospects. Out, out of all those guys. Sandha- Sandheim's gone. Provorov's gone. Hag is gone. Gostas Bear is gone. Sam Warren is the only player that is still left up here in the preseason. For those defensive prospects. So um Sam Warren is the only guy still left, and he hasn't even played in that many games, I would say. If he has, I, I barely saw him at all. So, he is uh, he's the last person up here. He's the lone wolf. He's the last person left. So, uh, I guess they're going to see what he has left to give as well. But I have a feeling that he'll be probably sent back down to the Phantoms as well to get... Uh, familiarized with Gostas Bear and Hag. So, like I said, I like the way Gostas Bear played in this in this preseason a lot. Really good. But I was very surprised that uh, Medvedev had really good hockey experience and really good hockey senses. Um, because I'm looking at an interview right now, not with that Medvedev, like a little bit of a kind of uh, kind of like a, a, an overview of what Medvedev has been um has been doing here. Uh, I'm just looking here really quickly. Uh, yeah, nothing really too special about this interview. Anyway, this this article kind of sucks to say the least. But yeah, I think he does. Like I said, I think his tra- he transitioned really well so far that I've seen. And the Flyers are three and one in the preseason right now, which is really awesome. Um, and you know, I think he'll, I think he'll get better. I think he's still going to keep playing in these preseason games, continue to get adjusted to the NHL style of play. And you know, I think he's going to be a really good um, addition to this defensive squad. So let's go. Let's take a look at this defensive squad going into the season once again. So we're going to have Strait and Delzado, McDonald. And McDonald and Medvedev, Gudas and Shen. So that's probably what the defensive core is going to look like to start. They have been saying that Luke Shen has been, or Ron Hextall is actively trying to make a trade to get Luke Shen out of here and uh, possibly get another defenseman to uh, start in this, uh, he's trying to trade him. That's that's plain and simple. He is trying to um, t- trying to trade Luke Shen without a doubt. So um, that's a little bit of a little keynote there that he's trying to trade Luke Shen. If he does get traded, who's the other extra defenseman? I don't know. You have to put one of the young guys in there, I would assume. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? So there's that. Uh, offensively, it's still going to be pretty much pen and paper, man. Like I said, it, Hextall said Shen's been playing okay, but I think he, he's been playing, I, I guess so, he's been playing okay. The fact that he's said, he said Lawton is playing a lot better than Shen really confuses me, because I've rarely seen Scott Lawton out there, other than that, like a one game in that Islanders game, which he actually played all right in. Other than that, I don't think he's been really good. Uh, I'm liking the, the depth signings by the Philadelphia Flyers, too. Like, the guys like Tim Brent... Chris Porter, 
uh, Colin, Colin McDonald, those guys, like the depth players, they'll be probably put in the fandoms and then essentially called back up to the team. Will be playing really well. Uh, the fourth line for the Flyers, which is Belmar, Van Develde, and Ryan White, they played really well in that first game too against the Islanders. I forgot to mention that uh, they were like the first line players in that game. Uh, they were playing most of the ice time, which was pretty cool. And I think the fourth line is going to be really good as well this year. Um, let's talk about the coach too, because uh, that is something that I think a lot of you guys will be interested in too. Was uh, how was Dave Hackstall kind of you know, gauging this team out. Well, the fact that he he was taking a lot of notes, which is something I normally don't see NHL coaches do. Usually they kind of just, you know, take everything in their head and, you know, analyze it that way. But Hackstall, you know, he had his pen and paper out. He was writing notes as the uh, as the play was happening. I don't know if he was taking, like, uh, notes of, like, who took penalties or something like that or if he took uh, notes of, like, something that he saw during the game. But he was actively taking notes about everything and every little thing about um that was happening in the games which was pretty pretty cool i like a head coach that does that he likes you know he sees something takes notes and they'll address it later or as the game happens so i like that he's you know he's trying to um you know get these guys uh to really try to adjust to his kind of style of play and you know i do see a little bit of a change in the style of play, especially in that power play and the way the Flyers are in the offensive zone. They're putting a lot more shots on net, which is definitely the play style that Dave Haxtell uh, wants to get, other than Barubi's stupid effing play style, whatever, you know, he decided to do. Kind of like the grittiness of the Philadelphia Flyers. He tried to bring that back, but this time you can see Haxtell and the team taking a lot more shots into the net. So, there's that. Um, the, 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 the goaltending, Mason looked okay. Neuvirth looked okay. I'll say that right off the bat. Mason and Neuvirth played okay. Like I said, I I said this before. I think Mason is going. I mean, Neuvirth is going to be a much better upgrade than Ray Emery was last year. So I do think you will see Neuvirth and Mason have a pretty good time there in goaltending. Well, once again, it's it's just that same question that I bring up year after year after year. Can this def- can this defense help out the goaltending enough to relieve them of stress? Like I said, Mason last year was, you know, he stood on his head some of those games. Everybody who always said, oh, Mason wasn't the greatest goaltender last year. Go look at the numbers, man. His save percentage was top of the league, top 10 in the league without a doubt. And probably even, I think it was top five to say the least. His save percentage was really that great last year. Um, so I think Neuvirth will definitely bring and will give some rests to Seabase because I think Neuvirth could have the po- uh, potential to go in a little bit of a tear, relieve Mason of some starts, give him some extra rest every now and then, and uh, hopefully, barring injury, this team should be pretty go to pretty good to go for the goaltending space. Um, but we'll we'll just have to see how the rest of this preseason goes. I, I'm I'm surprised that the uh, Stolars what didn't play a game yet. I'm assuming because they sent Cousins, Gostas, Baron Hag back to the Phantoms that their season did start already. I'm actually gonna look that up. Like I, I'm not entirely sure if the Phantoms if the Phantoms have started their schedule yet already. I want to say they have. Let me see. Uh, schedule. No, that's a preseason game on Wednesday, September 30th. Another preseason game against Hartford. Yeah, they haven't started yet. I guess they want them to play. Yeah, preseason against Wilkes-Barre. Preseason, preseason. Opening night is at home against the Syracuse Crunch. Yeah, so they still have... Yeah, they don't start the season two till October 10th. So I guess the Flyers want them to play some preseason games for the Phantoms as well. I don't know. That's pretty weird why they would send them down when the Flyers still have three preseason games left as well. I don't know. That's pretty weird how they would do that, but whatever the case. Let them do what they do. Let Ron Hextall do his thing. But um, what I want to talk about else? Uh, Depth players, goaltenders, I just got touched on that. Um, Umberger has looked okay. Vanilla Cavalier has looked okay. You know... Drew and Simmons and Raffle look really well. That's one thing I really wanted to touch on is, is the fact that their chemistry is still there. 
that chemistry between Voracek, Simmons, and uh, Voracek, Giroux, and Raffle is still there. I do think Raffle will start first line, first line to uh, begin the season. I think he is going to be on that first line. Um, I think it's going to be them on the first line. Uh, Shen Simmons and Shen Simmons and Shen Simmons and Gagne maybe on the second. Because, you know, he's been playing okay. It looks like uh, Simmons and Gagne do have a little bit of chemistry working, which is going to be nice. Third line, I'm sorry, Sean, but you're going to get probably stuck with uh, RJ Umberger and Matt Reed again. Reed's looked a little bit better. You know, he had a really, really off year last year, so hopefully he can bounce back from that. Same thing with Umberger. Like, God forbid if he can actually have a good season. And then the fourth line, you know what the fourth line is. It's, um, well, is Belmar... Belmar, White, and Van Develde, but Vinny LeCavalier, you still have to question about where he's going to be fitting into this lineup. Is he going to take the place of, like, Belmar, White, or uh, or uh, the, the Van Develde one game so that he goes into the fourth line, or is he still going to be, like, a healthy scratch? I don't know. So we'll have to see where those guys get fitted into the lineup. But there's still three preseason games left to go. We have a lot to gauge about this team left. And uh, the key things that I do want to point out that we should be looking at for these last three preseason games to go are, can can these defensemen still do, um, now that some of them are gone, can the, because now, now that a lot of these uh, prospects are gone, like I said, Cousins, Gostisbehere, Hag, Konechny, Provorov, Sanheim, they're all gone. So will we see Sam Warren step up? Will will we see him actually step up in the defensive role? Will we see, um, you know, can we see an improvement in Michael Delzato? Uh, you know, just being a little bit more careful with the puck in a, in a sense, not to do as many turnovers. Uh, can the goaltender still play fairly well? Um, offensively, there's nothing really offensively that I have to question about because uh, what what is what's Lawton going to bring? What does Lawton have? Because those the three games that are still left here, um, can Lawton can Lawton perform, and can Braden Shen be better than okay is something I'd like to see as well. Sean Couturier really hasn't shown up as well. I haven't talked about him as much in this podcast either. So um, it'll have to be interesting what Sean Couturier will um, will be bringing as well. Because I haven't seen much of him. Other than that, everybody else has been playing fairly well. Giroud's been good. Voracek's been good. Raffle's been good. Simmons has been good. Sam Gagne on the offensive side has been good. Defensively, as we said, he's not really too great. So maybe he can improve in that category. Umberger, meh. Manila Calvier, meh. Matt Reed, meh. Uh, Braden Shen, apparently just okay. Um... And then what else? Fourth line, really good, really good, solid work from all the guys on the fourth line. And then the depth guys, like I said, Porter, Porter, uh, the, the Mac, uh, McDonald, McDonald, and and Tim Brent have been good. Pelujai was playing as well, so Pelujai actually is not too terrible either. I haven't seen. I think Drewiski played one game in the first game with the New York Islanders. So I haven't seen much of Davis Drewiski either, so um, no comment on him. And then, like I said, defensively. Uh, Streit's, I don't think Streit's played that many games. I think he might have played one or two. Can't remember, but Streit, he's been okay. Delzato needs to work on, you know, be more, more careful with the puck. Medvedev, he's playing perfectly fine. I have no, no problems with Evgeny Medvedev right now. Uh, Luke Shen, you know, Hextall's working on trading him apparently, so I'm not going to comment on him as long as he can... Play defense. I don't give a crap. And then Gudas has been playing very, very well. He's been throwing the body. He's been getting pucks on net. Um, and uh, I've yet to see the. Fu- I've yet to seen him see him fight. I would like to see Gudas have one preseason fight before uh, this preseason ends. I would like to see how well he can actually throw the mitts down there. So I would like to see that from him. Other than that, I think that'll just about wrap it up. It's not going to be the longest podcast in history, but. Um, yeah, there's still three preseason games to go. There might be another shorter podcast after that. And, uh, you know, there's still one week down, one week left to go for this Pliers preseason. I'm just going to take a look at this article, see if there is any game, anything that they want to be talking about. Anything talking about in this little... Uh, anything that this article just talks about briefly that I did not mention. And then I'll just get to some of the questions 
from the Flyers talk, and then we'll end the podcast. Uh, let's see. <sighs> let's see. I would like to see this Flyers team, like their good players, go up against some of the good players on the other team. So I hope that when they play the Devils twice and when they play the Rangers in New York, I hope that they bring their A squads because the Flyers have already cut down uh, some of their B roster players, and I think they're going to be playing a lot of their A players left for this last three preseason games. So I do want to mention that. I want to see how this Flyers team will go up against the A players of like the New York Rangers and the New Jersey Devils. So that's that. Uh, this article what it talks about just talks about getting Medvedev his transition. Like we said, it's you know it seems to be working pretty good. Uh, we saw Robert Hag and Shane Gostas Bear. Those two were good. They were paired together during preseason, so they're going to be sent down. Uh, let's see, full season. Uh, Gostas Bear coming off the ACL injury. Yep, we know about that. Quick defense. Hackstall. Uh, Hackstall likes to play what he calls quick defense. I've seen that a lot. Flyers are getting the puck out of the zone quickly, more quickly now, which is really cool. Um, game's going to be different. Pick your spots. Yep, we know. Uh, Nick Cousins. Yep, blah, 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 blah. Nothing else here. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Mason, regular season form. Uh, capable of getting wins. Yep. Whoever writes these articles on Flyers.com is not great. Who wrote this? Um, Brian Smith. Name doesn't ring a bell. It's, it's okay, I guess. Not that really. Not the greatest article. Whoever writes these articles is meh. It's just okay. We'll just we might just title that podcast. I'll probably not title the po- the episode number three just okay. But yeah, this this article wasn't really too great anyway. So um, yeah, that'll that'll do it. I'm gonna go to the questions now on Twitter. But I really just do want to see how this Flyers team will react when the A team, when the A team uh, goes up against the A team of hopefully the Devils and the New York Rangers. Okay, so let us get up something here. Okay, so a lot of these people didn't use the hashtag Flyers Talk, but they were uh, responding to my picture, so we'll answer these. Okay, uh, with Luke, with the possibility of Luke Shen leaving Philadelphia, where do you think he goes, and what does the return look like? Um, Nothing much where he could go. To be honest, I really do not know where Luke Shen could end up. What team needs defense right now that could use like a defensive defenseman? Honestly, I don't know. What the return could be? Nothing, nothing great. Draft pick at the most. Maybe a third if you're lucky. Maybe a second if you're lucky. That's about all I would see you get out of, uh, out of Luke Shen. But, you know, we've seen the wizard Ron Hextall work his magic. So, I, I mean, if he could trade Chris Pronger and Nicholas Grossman to Arizona and get back Sam Gagne, you know, that's pretty good. So, I mean, I would say the realistic, uh, the realistic option would be like a second or a third for Luke Shen. But... With the magic that Ron Hextall pulls off, you know, we could see something really, really good in return for him. But I don't see anything more than a second or a third for Luke Shen. Uh, most surprising performance this season, I've already mentioned that. It's been Travis Konechny and Shane Gostas Bear, um, without a doubt. So those two guys have been very... Uh, well, Konechny, Gostas Bear, and Medvedev. His, his is probably the most surprising performance this season. I didn't think Medvedev would transition this well to the NHL level, and he's been playing very good. He's a power play. Uh, his power play specialist is really good, very good hockey sense, gets rid of the puck quick, and uh, Tave Hackstall's defensive style of quick defense is actually really working out well. What do you think about the future for the Flyers? I mean, it, lo- it looks great. <laughs> it does. The defense looks great. Provorov, Morin, Sanheim, Hag, and Gostisbehar, especially with the preseason that uh, Gostisbehar, Hag, and Hag had. You know, Warren and Sanheim and Provorov will definitely need a little bit more time. But for right now, it looks good. Offensively, though, um, Konechny, man. Konechny, he's he's a future first liner for this Philadelphia Flyers team. He's a future winger to work with Claude Giroux and Jacob Voracek without a doubt in my mind. He is a future first line player. Okay, uh, let's see. So let's go to Flyers talk here. Answer a couple more of these, and then we will... Um, Let's see, we'll get it done here. Okay, uh, let's see, not many questions here, not many, uh, 
this is a Patrick Kane thing. I'm not going to comment on that. Do you think they will be playing in the playoffs? Do I think the Flyers will be playing in the playoffs? Um, they're going to be a bubble team. They are going to be a bubble team fighting for that wild card spot because the Metro is going to be owned by uh, New York Rangers. Pittsburgh is going to be better. I know that for a fact. Even though they got Phil, they got Phil Castle for a reason, so you know Pittsburgh is going to be better. They can't beat us, but still, um, they're going to be a better team. Uh, let's see who else. I think the Devils might surprise some people this year, even though they're not going to have that much. Uh, you know, they're not going to be a great goal scoring team uh, defensively. They're still defensively and goaltending wise, they're still solid, and you know they play that stupid. F- effing four checking game that always pisses me off whenever we play the devil so you know they're going to be good islanders are going to be good as well so uh the only teams that are going to be questionable in our division are carolina i don't think carolina is going to be a good team and then columbus is kind of a big question mark as well so i think that if the flyers can stay in you know contention well the devil's kind of questionable as well if their offense is there they might be a good team but defensively and goaltending they're going to be good so if the flyers can stay you know kind of along the along the same record of the new york rangers uh the islanders and the penguins and you know they compete with the other guys in the wild card like who's going to be wild card teams in the other division i think it's going to be tampa bay montreal and uh tampa bay montreal and uh washington for the other, well, Wash, oh, Washington's in our division. I keep forgetting Washington's in the Metro. So Washington's going to be a good team this year as well. So Flyers are going to be battling a wild card spot, probably with Detroit. Uh, Detroit, I, I wouldn't say Boston's a good team this year. I don't think Boston's going to make the playoffs. Um, wow, I cannot remember who the hell is in the other division now. Who the hell's in the other division? Uh, let's go to NHL.com, go to the standings so I can just see who is in the other division. Because I can't remember. Uh, Flor- okay, Buffalo, they're not going to be a good team. We know that. Toronto, they're not going to be a good team. We know that. So I think the Flyers are going to be competing for a wild card spot with uh, with Washington. Well, no. Washington's going to be, I think, with division. Division winners is going to be Montreal, Tampa Bay, Detroit, same as last year. And then probably the Rangers. Pittsburgh Penguins, and I want to say the Washington Capitals. So I think the Flyers are going to be battling for a wild card spot with the Islanders and the Ottawa Senators and possibly the Florida Panthers. I think Florida is going to be a much better team this year as well. So the Flyers do have a slight chance to make the playoffs this year, and I think it's going to be a wild card team. Uh, I think it's going to be a wild card team at all. Like I said, I don't think Boston, Toronto, Buffalo. Carolina or New Jersey is going to be in contention for the playoffs. I think it's going to be like a five-way battle between Philadelphia, Columbus, uh, Florida, Ottawa, and who else did I say? And the New York Islanders for that wild card spot in the Eastern Conference. So that's my opinion of it. Where where I think the Flyers are going to end up. New result. Uh, do you think? Do you believe that Braden Shen will make a case for himself this year? I think. I think it's now or never. Like I said, people have been saying that Shen's been just okay, and will Braden Shen make a case for himself this year? He had a good season last year. I don't know why people keep saying like, will he make a case for himself? He had a good season last year. Like it wasn't the greatest, but you know, it was. It was the decent year that he had. I think the better person to has who can make a case for himself this year is Sean Couturier. I think he has the he has to have a really good season this year. He has to show that he has the offensive touch and not just the defensive side. But they wanted Braden Shen to become that first line player. So if he can prove himself this year and possibly, you know, fight Raffle for that first line spot, then I could see it happening. But, you know, I think he will make a case for himself this year. Uh three more things. No, we've already done that. We've already done that. And uh, let's just see if there is any more Flyers Talk things. Anything else? No, I think that's it. All right, cool. So we'll end off the podcast right now. So we might have another podcast maybe within a uh, next week as well just to uh, talk about the last three preseason games as well. Uh, maybe just they're going to be like a short one to discuss the scores and actually who stood out for those guys in that game as well. But other than that, I think this is a good time to end the podcast right now. So remember, guys, if you want to listen to the podcast on SoundCloud, it will be available on SoundCloud now. 
just remember that the YouTube version of it will be sounding a lot better and it will um, go up first, but the SoundCloud one will be followed shortly after. And if you don't want to listen to uh, my beautiful voice and, you know, sounding better, just go to SoundCloud if it's more easier for you guys. I'll do that for you as well. It's much faster to upload to SoundCloud too as well that I have noticed. But that'll do it for our podcast this time, guys. Remember to leave a like, use the hashtag Flyers Talk to discuss anything that you guys want to talk about for this podcast. And I am think you know what? I am going to leave a question of the day for you guys that we will uh, answer next podcast. I'll look it over as well. So in addition to going over like the Flyers uh, Talk hashtag, I think I'll leave a question of the day for you guys that you can answer in the comments section um then we could talk about it next podcast as well and i actually do have a really good uh question to ask of you guys today so it's going to be concerning my one of my favorite players on the flyers right now is going to be michael roffel now we know that he did have some injuries last year which kept him out a couple games but you know he was on pace to having like a 25 to a 30 goal season last year so We know Michael Roffel has the potential to really put in some goals. He scored, I think, 20 goals last year, which was really, really nice. I think he scored, no, he scored 22, I think. I remember seeing that as a pop-up on the preseason game. But still, he has the potential to be like a 25 to a 30 goal scorer on this game. And that is going to be my question for you guys. If Michael Roffel is on the first line with Claude Giroux and Jacob Voracek to start this season and possibly for the rest of the year, do you think Michael Roffel has it in has it in him once again to get a 25 to 30 goal season? That's going to be my question for you guys today. So answer that question in the comments section. We'll talk about it next time for our next podcast. So um, hopefully I'll get your guys' opinions on that. So do you think Roffel can have a 25 to 30 goal season this year for the Philadelphia Flyers if he works? Only if. He works with Claude Drew and Jacob Voracek. I'd be surprised if he works with anybody else if he can get a 25-goal season. So that is the question I leave you guys with today. So thanks, guys, for listening to our third episode of Flyers Talk Podcast. We'll be back within maybe a week or two to discuss the final three season, pre- the three final three preseason games against the New Jersey Devils and the New York Rangers. And uh, we shall take it from there. So thanks for listening, guys. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe as always. And I'll see you guys next time for another edition of Flyers Talk.